Hi, I'm Jo and this is my January wrap up. These are all the books that I read in January. I had a fantastic reading month. So I started off with The Known World by Edward P. Jones. I have a rambling, incoherent book talk for this. It was amazing. Wow, things I never thought of. This is the story of a black slave owner. He was born into slavery, he became a free black man, and then he had his own plantation where he owned slaves. It was also the Pulitzer Prize winner in 2004. It's just my cats. They're okay. Next, I read The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. This is the story of five sisters who commit suicide over, I think, 13 or 14 months. It is told from the perspective of a boy that lived in the neighborhood, so you don't really get a bunch of insight into the girls, but I really enjoyed this, even though they all committed suicide. I really enjoyed this book. It was really good, so I want to watch the movie. Who's in it? Kirsten Dunst and Josh Harnett, Kathleen Turner, James Wood. Um, then I read The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that it took me so long to read this book. I loved it. This is the story of an orphan during the World War II, and she is placed with a foster family, and wow. Her foster father teaches her how to read, and it's absolutely amazing. I loved this book so much, and I cried. And Next, because, you know, this is all going so well, reading all these books about death. I read Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I read this when I was a teenager, and I didn't remember a whole lot about it, so I read it again. This is about two laborers, George and Lenny in um, Depression era, California, working on a ranch. It's the story of their friendship and some stuff that happens to them while they are on a particular ranch. And it is heartbreaking and very short and beautiful. This reminded me how much I love Steinbeck's writing. I read The Grapes of Wrath last April, I believe. That's the only thing I read by him. And this book just reminded me how much I love his writing. It's beautiful. I think here's around, around here is like where I started getting kind of depressed. So let's keep on going with As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. This book, I don't know what I read. I don't even know what's going on here. This is ha Faulkner's harrowing account of the Bundren's family's odyssey across the Mississippi countryside to bury Addie, their wife and mother. They are literally carting a dead woman around in a box in the south in a cart pulled by horses in the summer. Did I say that already? In the summer. It stunk. My goodness. This is told um, by different, all the people in the family. They all have, they're all narrating this. Like one chapter is one son, another chapter is the daughter. Even Addie, the dead mother, has some stuff to say. And I still don't know what I read. I still don't know what I read. And then something happened at the end to, like, wrap up one of the characters' story. Something I did not see coming at all. And I was like, where did that even come from? I thought he was, like, the most likable, normal person in the entire bunch. I don't even understand what happened. Also, this picture kind of creeps me out. It is the copy of a real black and white picture, and it is a dead lady in a box with a cutout to see her, and she has cobwebs on her. I'm assuming, though, that a real dead person would not still look this well and have that many cobwebs on it, but then I read A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett because... I'm a sadist and like to make myself cry, apparently. This story was great, and I cried. This is the story of a little girl who is taken to a boarding school and left by her father. Her mother died, and then her father dies, because why not, you know? So she loses 
her inheritance because her father made some bad business deals. So she is indebted to this boarding house and all of a sudden she goes from the, the show pupil because she was the richest and had the nicest clothes and she was very smart. On her own, she was very smart. And now she is a beggar and she lives in a cold attic and is basically an indentured servant for the lady that runs the boarding school. But it has a very happy ending. It will make you cry because you are so happy. Unibrow or Unibrow? Her name is Una. Or Una. Una or Una LaMarche. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her name. This is a memoir. I was sent this from Plume. It was a contest that I won or drawing on Twitter in December. I did a Plume unboxing video where I showed where I received this. So it's a memoir of a girl that had very unfortunate eyebrows all through childhood until she was a preteen. She was a precocious intellect. She has a love of pop culture and eyebrows bushier than Frito Kalos. Who I read though that she actually um, exaggerated her eyebrows. I may have actually read that in this book. In her paintings, she would exaggerate her eyebrows. Anyway, she is a 30 something, she is my age, so I got like all of the pop culture references. This was a very funny book, The Things That Happened to This Poor Woman, Girl. It says Misadventures of a Late Bloomer. It was great. She is the literary love child of Nora Ephron and Jenny Lawson, and I love Jenny Lawson. She's the bloggist. I've talked about her before. I but she has a popular blog called The Sassy Curmudgeon, and she's a contributor on Huffington Post. And it's just a funny book. This does not come out until March 31st. I also finished My True Love Gave to Me. Well, actually, I started and finished My True Love Gave to Me by edited by Stephanie Perkins. I won this in a giveaway in December also from Lisa at Lisa's Book Adventures. These are a collection of YA short stories. It's been all over booktube because it just came out in I think October. It is gorgeous. This is the UK edition. I've never read any of these authors before. I don't read much YA and I was not blown away by this book. Some of the stories felt like they were incomplete. Like there wasn't, I know they're short stories, so you don't have a lot of time to build up the world or background information and whatnot. Some of them I just felt like they weren't very thought out and they didn't really make sense and I was confused and I like the funniest part, the thing that I liked best in this entire book was in one of the short stories, Santa's favorite song was Last Christmas by Wham. And I love Last Christmas by Wham. It's the most ridiculous song in the world and I adore it. So I thought, oh my goodness, this story is going to be great. No, it wasn't. I just didn't. It was like incomplete. Some of them felt like excerpts from a book. Like you just opened a book and plopped out 20 pages. So I'm sorry, but I am glad I have this book because it's absolutely gorgeous and I will keep it. I'm not going to get rid of it because it's so pretty. I read How to Grow Up, a memoir by Michelle T. I just did a book talk on this. She is amazing. She is on book tour right now. This book just came out on January 27th. This covers her adult life, how she grows up. This is her fourth memoir and she's written a bunch of stuff. She is very active in the queer literary arena type. She has she set up foundations and all sorts of stuff. This woman, I mean, she spent like a decade being drunk and high, yet she's done so many amazing things. I'm like, how in the world did you just take out a decade of your adult life and you've accomplished so much still, so much. She's in her early 40s, she's currently married, and I know she had a baby. I need to know more about 
what happened. She announces that she's pregnant in this book and that's it. It's like a cliffhanger. I mean, it wasn't at the end. It was in one of the stories. And I'm like, come on, I need to know more. Let me know more. I love this book. She is completely different from me. Her lifestyle is completely not my lifestyle, but she is extremely relatable. I just like gleaned so much advice from her. And so many times I was just like, yes, I know how you feel because I feel that way too. And this is one of the things that I love about books. I mean, she, I don't have a single tattoo. I've never done a drug and I've only been drunk once. And we are just completely different. Yet, I'm like, lady, you're me. I'm you. What? How in the world? I am so glad that I read this book. I am so glad that Plume sent me this book. I am like, oh my gosh, I am in love with this book. I am in love with this this book. Pick this up, look up her tour, see if she's coming to a city near you and go see her. I also read Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. This is about a World War II bomber and uh, he was an Olympic runner and he was a prisoner of war. It was amazing and heartbreaking and you cry and you are so glad he survives. That was the only thing that got me through this book is knowing that he lived. The things that he went through, some of the pictures in this book are hard to look at. I'm not going to watch the movie. It is a movie. I would not be able to see it. There is no way I would be able to watch that. So that's why I, I read My True Love Gave to Me this month. I would read this and I would just be so emotional. So I would read a short story in My True Love Gave to Me. I also read Jhumpa Lahiri's Unaccustomed Earth. This is a collection of short stories. The main character in each of these stories is Indian, like first generation, well they weren't all born in the United States, like their parents are from India and they are growing up in the United States so they have like a foot in the old world and a foot in the United States and they're like trying to bridge the two cultures. So it was interesting, I enjoyed it. And it was a good book. It's the first Jim Lahiri that I read. I'm glad that I finally read it. I don't know why I just kept putting it off. And I can now stay on book two because I have finally read Jim Lahiri. So I read a lot of books in January. I read a lot of sad books in January. February is going to be like my month of happy love stories. I'm not really into romance. I don't know what I'm going to read in February, but hopefully no one dies in any of my books in February. I can't handle any more crying. If you have read any of these books and would like to talk about them down below, let me know. I plan on filming a couple book talks on some of these books. If there's one in particular, let me know and I will consider doing a book talk about it. Some of these books are hard to talk about. Unbroken. It's hard to talk about. What did you read in January? What was your favorite read that you read in the past month? Let me know down below. If you do a wrap up video, let me know so I can check out your video and I will talk to you later. Bye.